This video will be an extremely unconclusive one. We are looking into the handbook of chemistry and physics. Uh, this is that handbook. A lot of pages. And um, it describes on a very precise level all the properties of elements, semiconductors, etc., etc. And when we, we look at the pages, this is an enormous amount of info. When we compare that, for instance, to my schematic here, uh, how you can make um, an electromagnetic deflection tube uh, work, with an oscillator, high voltage oscillator made with a few transistors, we have to take in account that everywhere in this circuit there are physical um, properties and they play a very important role. I don't want to get into a too simple um, comparison of this scientific information and my circuit. My circuits are always practical and I tested them, I make them experimental, etc. etc. So for instance, we have here a cathode ray tube with a filament, etc. etc. Electrons are negative, attracted by the positive um, anode. Anyway, of course, here we have transistors inside very, very complex um, semiconductor effects are present and they were studied by the uh, three professors that um, showed how a transistor worked Bardeen, Bratton, Bratton and Shockley the inventors in a certain way of the transistor, but of course um, they had to study a lot and I want to demonstrate it here on the basis of this book and when I look at this book I can only get an enormous uh, respect for all the um, scientific personnel that uh, studied um, the crystal stru structures of uh, metals and semiconductors etc etc and here they, they indicated a lot of properties and I don't bind any conclusion to uh, for instance this circuit and the only thing that uh, I want to show is that there are so many uh, extremely important properties of semiconductor materials uh, that we handle nowadays in our computers, etc. etc. So, uh, the diamond structure of elements, the zinc blend structure compounds. Uh, here all these uh, say uh, not elements but um, uh, compounds consisting of two elements or more elements that have um, very specific properties the molecular molecular mass the average atomic mass the lattice parameters the density the melting point, the micro hardness, the specific heat, the, the d by temperature, the coefficient of thermal linear expansion, and the thermal conductivity. Conductivity. So, uh, when you study such a book, uh, you can uh, read for hours and also get inspiration to use. Uh, 
kinds of semiconductors that were not used uh, nowadays, like silicon, uh, germanium, uh, all kinds of metal oxide semiconductor materials, um, etc. So you can get a lot of inspiration out of these dry um, phenomenon, dry information that's directly related to the material, and they are here. And uh, we can see here word sites, zincite structure compounds, calciopyrite uh, structure compounds. Um, more and more and more. We they talk about ter ternary semiconductors. I've never heard that word, but anyway. Here defect calciopyrite structures. So there's a lot to do, a lot to study for chemistry students. Halide structure semiconductors other semiconductors. So not only germanium and silicon uh, are useful, usable for uh, semiconductor materials. And that's all I wanted to tell. I don't want to get into a kind of scientific um, discussion, but this book shows the properties of all kinds of uh, semiconductor materials. And when you are a scientist, perhaps you can find inspiration for new applications uh, in all these tables, etc., etc. And that was the only aim of my video. Let's go back to this circuit, the complete practice. Uh, I made a um, cathode ray tube working with the help of a uh, high voltage generator that's here. And uh, I made uh, two deflection units here and here for X and I, horizontal and vertical, and that these units were made in this way. They were only a simple um, kind of audio amplifiers, but instead of the loudspeaker, the coil, the deflection coil in the tube was mounted. So, it worked very properly. I have um, scrapped the circuit, but anyway, when you want to make it, it's very good possible with the help of uh, some of an old uh, black and white cathode, cathode ray tube circuit with deflection coils on the neck of the tube. That's what it is. Here you see how I made it. This is also an important circuit when you want to make such a circuit. It's very useful, especially for frequencies going from, say, 20 hertz up to 15 kilohertz. And here you can see how I made the high voltage unit. Anyway, there is a lot to tell about the scientific approach here and the approach in practice, electronics practice. But they are connected. They are both aiming in the same direction.